All right, boys and girls, this is Brad from East Coast Angel, and today we're going to be doing a A4 Fly teardown. This gun actually came from Tim Furpo. Uh, he is a master airsmith, and a probably, I would say, a god among gun tuning and repair. Um, and I'm absolutely honored that he chose me to do the work on his A4 Fly. Um, he sent it in. We're going to be putting a new battery in it. Uh, but right now, we're going to focus on how to tear it down properly. And here we go. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to show you uh, exactly what I use for tools. Um, I do this at every video, but uh, just in case you're tuning in now, um, the first thing I'd like to point out is I use a lot of different uh, Allen keys. I make sure that I have plenty of uh, the right size for this marker. They're all metric, um, so it's pretty easy. Um, next thing I use is a uh, set of um, you know jeweler pliers. These can be bought at any uh, hobby shop, and they allow me to take the circlip out of the regulator and on the back plate where the battery normally would have the on off switch screw into it. Uh, that is uh, held on by one also. You can also get the uh, regular uh, pliers from like Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, I use a Leatherman uh, typically to take the internals out of the rig. Usually just tap it. It's a nice flat hard surface. Works perfect for that exact uh, reason. Um, I do have uh, the Angel um, you know, regular uh, teardown tools. This is a uh, ram adjuster, and um, it normally would have the snap ring um, tool also, but we don't need to use that because there is a internal uh, snap ring uh, rather than uh, with the LCD and LED there and the IR3, they're external. Um, but that's always nice to have. This is the LPR tool. Uh, you can screw it in. You can pull out your um, big piston from the LPR, and you can add and remove shims. Um, the one thing I do uh, like to stress is having a gauge. Um, mine is obviously humongous, but they are all, um, you know, very, very important, especially when going to tune. Um, you know, angels, they like to, you know, be set at a certain uh, pressure, and after that, they usually take care of themselves. Uh, but again, using a, um, a gauge will also help you, uh, you know, in that uh, finding that sweet spot. Um, my fancy uh, old wooden spoon uh, I like using this just because of the fact that when I go to push out the internals it doesn't scratch the inside um, you can also use a squeegee too I use planet eclipse grease uh, on the o-rings I usually just a little bit of uh, you know just a you know slick them up a little bit um, I find that this grease is readily available at almost all uh, big uh, paintball places uh, indoor shops and whatnot and uh, you know the price is right uh, but again it's always available and I've been using it for years it's great stuff um, this uh, board has Phillips screws so I'm going to be using a small uh, machine um, you know screwdriver uh, it's going to allow me to take the uh, uh, screws out from the top and the bottom of the board uh, for removal I also recommend having a pick available uh, that's to take the o-rings off and allows you to get into like small little crevice areas uh, that you can't with a uh, q-tip uh, and whatnot I mean we will be removing the um, uh, the set screws for the pins anyway but it's always good to you know if you you know need to and you don't want to tear down the whole gun uh, to be able to clean and be able to get stuff out of the crevices um, it allows your uh, your marker to operate properly uh, you know the breech opening and, and and whatnot like it should those are really cheap. They can be found at like Harbor Freight and whatnot. So without uh, further uh, ado, we are going to get right into it. Um, first thing I like to do is I usually like to take the airline off uh, and whatnot. This one doesn't have one, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, it does have a regulator though. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew that and pop that right off. Um, I, when I do uh, teardowns, um, you know, on uh, most of these guns, I take you know all the o-rings off um, and I you know check the threads and make sure that they're nice and clean uh, the worst uh, you know worst case scenario is if you were to put this back together uh, at any point and 
um, you didn't clean the threads out and you go ahead and you start um, you know putting one of the uh, you know one of the screws back in uh, and it goes in you know gritty um, good example these threads have you know grit all the way around them you know really easy uh, to clean I use a uh, Dremel with a wire wheel attachment cleans those up makes them nice um, allows for uh, you know just simple easy um, uh, reassembly uh, and again proper reassembly uh, that's the big thing is making sure that uh, everything goes back together like it should that way when it comes apart it, it is twice as easy and you don't have to worry about uh, you know stripping stuff out or you know um, cross threading uh, is kind of a big thing with these guns so um, normally uh, you know you would uh, you know at, at this point you remove the circlip out of the regulator uh, again kind of keep your area contained uh, because this little guy likes to rock it on out of there um, you know there it's spring-loaded so it will take off on you um, now I like to take my Leatherman and tap out the um, you know the big piston uh, there's that right there and then just keep going and get the rest of it out you have a um, you have a big piston with two o-rings on it and you've got your uh, your your dish shaped uh, shims you want to make sure when putting this back together that those are in the proper um, you know there's a format to them they're they're shaped they're you know got like a you know a u shape to them um, or a concave you want to make sure that they're proper when putting them back together if not you're going to end up with velocity issues it's got a ball bearing that usually sits you know on top of the uh, set screw, um, you know, the velocity screw here. And when you screw that in, the ball bearing moves up and pushes the piston. It all connects, it all seals. You want to check the um, tip on your um, mini piston and you want to check the O-ring. Uh, both are in great shape, uh, which doesn't surprise me. Again, this, um, this marker came from a, uh, from a gun tech um, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's going to be in good shape. Um, he did say that he hasn't used it in a while though. So, you know, who knows? Um, there's a, uh, there's the famous, uh, hardware, uh, washer. I've been seeing more of these, um, in, uh, you know, in guns. I have no idea why, uh, they are, but his gun is no exception. Mostly the A4, um, uh, series. So maybe there's something going on here. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Try to figure out why I'm seeing more of these uh, installed in these guns. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and we're going to take off the um, uh, the vertical ASA. Uh, it's a real simple thing. It's got um, it's got a screw on the outside, and it's got a screw inside. Now, when taking these apart, you have to remove both in order to be able to remove the vertical ASA uh, and also get to the uh, body pins for the internals. Uh, you know, there's only one way to take them off. I've seen a bunch of people try different ways, but that is essentially the only way to do it. Um, you go ahead and get that in there. All right, we're going to need to use a little bit of leverage because that one is cranked right up. There's that. Super simple, super easy. Just go ahead and knock that right out of there, put that right over there. I'm going to be putting all of my screws and stuff like that kind of over in this corner. I like to be able to be organized. Um, that's one thing that uh, I pride myself in. Um, you can go ahead and take this o-ring out. It's shaped like a kidney bean, but it is not um, You know a custom or special o-ring. It's just a basic simple uh, O-ring that has been molded by the shape of the uh, vertical ASA um, As I go through I tend to wipe down stuff and I tend to clean stuff as I'm going through and breaking it down Just because it's you know, it uh, satisfies my uh, my OCD um, And allows me to say okay. Well, that's one less thing I have to do uh, in the near future. Um, a lot of these guns have uh, little nooks and crannies and stuff like that. I find that um, Q-tips uh, help out really well. Uh, you want to make sure though that, um, that you give them a, you know, 
give them a good uh, you know dose of air uh, after cleaning them out just because of the fact that Q-tips will leave a little bit of lint behind and you don't want that traveling through the gun. Um, again, it's not a major thing, but it's one thing that you want to look after. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the uh, grip cheek off uh, of the of this side, the board side, uh, mainly because I want to be able to unplug everything um, before taking the um, frame off the body. Uh, not a lot of people are aware of this, but these, um, all of the uh, wires are, are uh, you know, fragile. They're, they're, they use a smaller gauge, um, you know, obviously it being a, uh, it being a paintball marker. Uh, so you want to be gentle with them, um, you know, when taking them apart. Uh, the eyes, uh, the eye ribbons are really thin and frail. Um, so again, that's, you know, one other thing that you want to keep an eye on, uh, is, you know, when you're taking the frame off, if this happens to snag, it will pull that connector right off. Um, right now I don't see any other, the other, the solenoid connectors up there. This gun doesn't have a battery in it because it's been sitting in storage. Um, and the battery was no good. Pro tip. Don't leave a battery in your Angel if you're going to be storing the gun for a while. Why? Because they leak. And when they leak, trust me, the worst case scenario, your um, uh, your battery leaks out and ruins your anodized you know, finish on your gun. Um, I've seen it a lot of times. Uh, it is one of those like, oh, wow, that's really surprising. I didn't know that would ever happen. Uh, but it's a battery and we've all seen what happens if you leave batteries in like your childhood toys and then you know 20 years later you pull them out of storage the batteries are, have exploded mainly because of the fact that the hot cold hot cold hot cold um, you know and sooner or later the housing will let go uh, and then you know unfortunately that's what you end up with uh, is a um, uh, is an exploded battery and like I said worst case scenario it will leak down into this area and it will turn the anodizing uh, into a nice little like acid wash uh, it's it sucks um, so try not to do that um, we're gonna go ahead actually and I want to remove the um, the frame right from the uh, uh, right from the body uh, before I remove the board and mainly uh, I will show you the reason why in just a second. Uh, right now I'm holding on to the front of the board, um, the screen. Uh, the adhesive, uh, again, because these guns have age on them, the adhesive has uh, has failed. Um, so the screen is kind of flopping around. And I don't really want to have to worry too much about it. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the uh, frame and then I'm going to remove the body. Um, you know, and then you know, make sure that the... Uh, that the board stays in good shape. Um, that's kind of like one of the allure of the um, of the you know the A4 platforms are the screens and the boards and stuff like that. They're really they're really clean. They're really uh, informative, uh, but unfortunately they're also fragile. Um, and I've seen screens go bad just by sitting, um, you know, for an extended period of time, uh, which is really unfortunate. Um, you know, right now what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, Phillips screws out of the um, out of the you know where they're bolted to the uh, frame and we're going to go ahead and just remove the board uh completely leaving the screen uh leaving the screws right in there uh, i'm going to go ahead and pop these uh, buttons right out of here because they're going to get cleaned up um, and now we are left with the um with the frame um, as you can see it's kind of sticky uh, I don't like that um, you know kind of uh, particular uh, with making sure that the trigger is it has to be um, free you know it has to be free falling if you go like that and it doesn't just drop right down um, then you know when you're out and you're using it it's going to have a um, little bit of a disappointing effect uh, to you um, you know because you're you know, going to want to shoot fast and it's just going to, you know, there's going to be, it's going to be sluggish. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove the set screw that's in the frame. And we will uh, then be able to get to the pin that holds the trigger in the frame. Uh, like I said, a lot of these parts are small, so keep an eye on uh, where you're putting them. Uh, and also, you know, just make sure that, uh, you know, you try to keep them centrally located. Uh, if, if I ever drop anything, I have this, you know, pretty neat little, um, you know, little tool. And I picked this up at, uh, at 
at job lots. It's an extendable uh, magnetic pickup tool, but it also has an LED light. Super cool, and it can pick up, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and I find that, you know, it's handy because I drop stuff all the time. It's ridiculous. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to tap the pin right out. Those usually come right out really easy. Um, you know, the LEDs and the LCDs and the IR3s and stuff, the pins are really hammered in there. But with this, um, because they put the set screw in there to keep it from backing out, they make it so the pin usually just slides right out. Um, the trigger comes right out, and at that point you can clean it up. Um, there is one, uh, you know, set screw in the back here, and essentially what it does is it it goes in and activates the leaf on the um, on the board, um, and so you can make and adjust your trigger however you like it. Um, they're very personal. Uh, I tend to not mess around with triggers. Um, when guns come in uh, just because of the fact that if they didn't ask me to I'm going to assume that they want to keep the trigger the way it is because that's how they like it uh, Again triggers can be kind of like a pair of shoes or or a pair of pants And if you like them, then you don't want to change them up um, You know, so therefore you leave it alone so There's that right there. We're gonna go ahead and leave that rail on there if I was gonna take it off I would just you know and then Take those two. It's not in the way, um, you know, and uh, essentially going to give these uh, a little cleaning, um, get all the, you know, the dust and all of the, uh, you know, residue paint off of it. Uh, and that will be looking awesome. Um, the fade on this gun is really sweet. Uh, I like uh, I like seeing the, um, the angel fades. Uh, I think they made some of the best looking um fades in the business at the time uh, they really kind of like you know went up you know above and beyond uh, but then again you're also paying you know twelve hundred fifteen hundred dollars for these markers so they should be uh they, they should really kind of blow your mind uh and if they don't then you know unfortunately uh you know, maybe you didn't get one of the ones that um you know was really you know, had that really sharp uh fade to them um the next thing i'm going to do is just because again these are fragile and i don't want them uh you know getting um you know, getting messed up. The eye, uh, the the, you know, the eyes have a uh, have a plug in that plugs into the board. Um, they have age to them, so the plastic is you know kind of uh, you know more susceptible to getting damaged uh, and breaking. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove them now uh, before I really start getting into taking uh, the body and moving it around and and whatnot. Um, I don't want it to snag on something and break those. So we we'll go ahead and pull both of those wheels out. Uh, the next thing is going to be taking off the eye covers. Um, pretty standard stuff here. Uh, you know, these screws, if you happen to notice that they start to round at all, um, remove them, replace them with new ones because sooner or later they are going to strip right out. And when that happens, uh, you have to extract them. And obviously, you know, oh, that's no big deal. Well, it isn't and it is. These sit flush with the eye cover so if you can get in there and you can get that out then awesome but if you can't and you have to start making notches to be able to extract it or whatnot you could hit the eye covers ding them up um, i've seen these things brutalized uh before so i tend to you know take my time uh and if i you know run into a um screw or you know which isn't going to um you know cooperate and come out then sometimes i will look for the next size up uh allen um you know allen key uh, and then at that point I can, you know, most of the time we're talking 99% of the time I can get it out at that point, you know, by just tapping in a bigger, uh, Allen key into it, um, you know, and then backing it out. Um, it never hurts to, um, put the Allen key into the screw and tap it, you know, because sometimes that little bit of, um, uh, you know, a little bit of impact will, free up uh, the screw a little bit and allow it to um, to back out. Uh, it's kind of similar to like an impact gun for a vehicle. Um, that little bit of action, believe it or not, goes a long ways. So I go ahead and I remove the detents and I move the uh, remove the springs. As I'm looking, uh, the detents are in good shape. They're round, um, you know, and that's awesome. They're a little dirty, but no big deal. What we're looking for with the detents are if there's flat spots from the bolt, um, you know, continue, uh, you know, continuing to hit them. Uh, at that point, they become less effective uh, in doing their job, which is, you know, Angel put them on both sides because they want the ball centrally located 
for the bolt. The best delivery uh, is going to be when the uh, ball is sitting right exactly where it needs to be, uh, rather than you know it being you know up uh, further in the breech um, or or whatnot. Um, you know, trust me, all of these things come in come into play when uh, when your angel is uh, shooting properly. Um, you know, it's the little things that will uh, that'll make them shoot um, you know and, and not shoot properly or, or uh, frustrate you. Um, so I'm not telling you stuff that you're not going to want to, you know, try out or hear. Uh, I try to, you know, give you just the, uh, the important stuff. So right now what I'm doing is I'm backing out these screws because I want to be able to remove the eyes. Um, as you can see, this eye set has a crimp in it, um, probably from when, you know, they put something on, you know, putting the frame back on and probably weren't set up right. They might have been over a little bit and they got crimped. Um, I'm hoping that they still work. They don't look like there's a break in them. But again, that's how fragile these are. Um, you literally can, you know, that can happen in a split second. Um, so now we've got that uh, done. I'm going to just take out this other screw. Uh, mainly because I want to also check the uh, threads. I want to make sure everything's clean. Um, again, I'm a real stickler for uh, making sure that, uh, you know, the guns are, uh, you know, and, and they're, they're clean, that uh, all the threads work properly. Um, I think it's important uh, when you're going through a gun, uh, especially when you have a, uh, a business and, and, and this is, you know, part of it that, uh, that they get every single bit of, uh, you know, the service charge, um, you know, is, is, is uh, applied here. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, pull off the, uh, the breech knob, which is pretty sweet. It's a booby. Um, and then uh, we have a couple more uh, you know, screws in the back. Um, again, these screws, if they happen to start to round, you're going to want to replace them. And these, a unique little, uh, little fact, if you have to drill them out, after you're done drilling them out, they will leave you with almost nothing to grab onto. So keep that in mind. Try not to have to drill these out if you don't have to. So now we have the other circlip that's on the back of the plate. And we, this one actually presses in so we have to back out the um, clip and as you can see they like to ricochet and fly all over the place no big deal I caught that one but I want to show you the difference it's the one that came off the back plate and that's the one that comes off out of the regulator they're different sizes and they also the regulator spreads out whereas this one spreads in or closes in um, you know and it's kind of neat uh, that Angel did that, mainly because of the fact that there's no way you can mix these up. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, you know, that's a plus right there. I think they were always thinking about stuff like that anyway. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the breech pin. I like to check the threads. They're good. When I was taking the, the booby knob off, um, there was no, uh, you know, there was no resistance. Uh, the pin itself is really clean. Um, I'll probably hit the uh, front of it though with a um, wire wheel on the Dremel uh, just to clean it up a little bit more. After I'm done with that, I usually put a little bit of grease um, in them, uh, in, in on it, just because I like to be able to make sure that it, it functions properly. And also grease does help our uh, repel water, which is nice. I check the, um, the you know, eye strap make sure that it's not cracked, torn, uh, make sure that there's no um, paint inside this channel here or up here because sooner or later that will discolor the um, anodizing. Um, today's paint's water-based, but that doesn't mean anything. I've seen it um, discolor and ruin uh, anodizing jobs, uh, which is unfortunate because, like I said, again, these, you know, this, this fade is really sweet. I like it. All right, so now um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the... Um, I'm going to pull the wires out the back uh, because I want to be able to uh, remove the solenoid. Um, you know, it's a pretty standard, uh, you know, procedure uh, at this point. Um, you know, just trying to, you know, get all the things that are attached, 
uh, electronically uh, back those off this actually has a antella feed um, you know plugged into it which is really cool that was an old school uh, add-on that angel did that allowed the uh, hopper to activate every time it shot um, it's kind of similar to the force feed loaders but uh, it, it only relies on um, you know a uh, signal to tell the um, you know to tell the uh, loader to uh, you know turn back on um, now uh, you know I'm going through and I'm looking at the uh, solenoid here um, it's well greased everything's got uh, you know it's got grease on it and whatnot the um, uh, the gasket has got a lot of grease on it but it, it's not oily uh, it's not separating if I go ahead and I wipe that off um, you can see it's got indents, uh, you know, which is fine because of the way that the uh, the base plate is. Um, you know, the one thing I always check though is separating because as soon as they start to fall apart and start to separate, that's when you're going to start running into um, failure uh, and leaks. So there's that right there. Now we also have a small little plug um, that's in between the solenoid housing and the uh, breech. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. It's got a really small uh, Allen screw. Uh, set screw in there. So we go ahead and back that little guy out. The cool thing about this plug is that it only, um, you know, goes in one way, and meaning when you put it in, you'll notice that the fat end, the fat corner or fat, uh, you know, side goes towards the breech and the thin side goes towards the solenoid. But there's also a little divot right here in the top, too. And if you were to flip it around, it's going to push the um, this this cover, uh, I mean, sorry, this plug towards the breech or towards the solenoid. Uh, either way, it's you want it centered. Um, so pay attention to that when you're taking it out. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the RAM. Um, you know, this actually still has the battery spacer in it, which is really cool. Uh, I, I believe in uh, trying to keep these as stock as possible. Um, you know, that includes all the little things. So we're going to go ahead and take the RAM out now. Um, you know, the RAM tool works really well. It's got uh, two prongs. They insert right into the back of the RAM, and then you can back it out. As soon as you get pretty much the, a good majority of the threads exposed, then at that point you can usually just grab onto it and just pull it right out. Um, you know, again, I like to wipe down, um, the parts as I'm going, and then I inspect the O-rings, I inspect the operation of the, uh, um, of the RAM, uh, you know, checking the threads in the back too, making sure they're clean, um, you know, adding grease, uh, you know, to your marker is important, um, you don't have to over-grease though, uh, a lot of people tend to, you know, want to over-grease, uh, their angel, you know, and essentially, if it doesn't move, if it's if it's a you know a non-moving part, say like this part of the RAM doesn't move, this part does. So that O-ring right there, yes, put a little bit of grease you know on that. That's awesome. But these you only have to just barely run a little bit over, and that's just to ease the installment of it in uh, into the marker. Um, it's nothing. It does nothing else. It actually because it's threaded, it just sits right there, and that's the only part that moves. Um, if you ever want to bench test your RAM, you can go ahead and you can plug the holes that are in the uh, that are in the back of the RAM, and you can do that, and then you can pull it forward, and if it snaps back, then you have good suction, which is always a good thing. Um, you know, you got to make sure that you cover you know each one of the holes up though, uh, and I mean that's all you can ask for with with that RAM. It's in good shape. Uh, the one thing I did notice is the hammer is moving uh, just a little bit, nothing major, um, which is no big deal. Well, we go ahead and we, um, you know, first we got to grab the right, uh, right Allen key. Uh, and then uh, you go ahead and you just tighten that right up. Um, that allows it to not move. I have seen uh, hammers back off of the ram and then the hammer actually hitting the valve body itself, not just the, the part of the stem that activates it. And I've seen this part damage the valve body and crack them. So make sure again that that's you know the set screw is tight and that the hammer isn't moving at all on the uh on the on the shaft of the ram all right so now we are pretty much getting to the end of this teardown it's it's uh you know all pretty basic stuff uh most of these angels uh nowadays are uh you know for me um you know i can do this 
you know, relatively quickly. Uh, you know, efficiency is kind of important uh, when I'm working on multiple uh, guns in a day. Uh, I think I'm on my second one today. I've taken a break, but um, you know, I've still got one, two, three, I've still got five more um, that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be up for a while uh, today. But you know, I kind of want to you know get these videos out. I want people to um, to see the uh, you know I want people to see exactly uh, you know what we're doing here. Um, you know, and uh, I want them to um, you know be able to kind of get their own uh, kind of be able to get their own um, guns towing apart uh, and be able to service their own stuff um, and so I think it's important uh, to be able to do that and, and get these out to the public uh, so right now what we're doing is we're taking off the end caps these are unique end caps because Tim has a theme going right now and that's their boobies we got a booby knob, we got booby uh, front caps, which are really cool. And I wish he had another set because these are unique. I've never seen them. And I want to know where I can get a set because I like the unique. I like the odd. Um, I think, uh, you know, they made so much stuff. Uh, you know, all kinds of companies made stuff for Angel. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to find little odds and ends and bits and pieces. All right, when you pull apart the, um, the front of the valve, um, you know, you've got your valve stem. You want to make sure that that uh, plastic part isn't spinning, isn't loose, um, you know, moving back and forth. Uh, if you do, uh, that will, that will um, affect your uh, velocity. Uh, you want to make sure that the spring is in good shape. It's not cracked or broken, um, you know, or excessively uh, compressed. And your bobbin, uh, you want to make sure all of the fins are in place, mainly because if one of them's not, it can, it can you know, Get kind of crooked in there and sooner or later uh, it, it could affect your um, you know the operating of your angel uh, it's not drastic but you know I mean there's a reason why all of these parts are the way they are uh, in their in their condition um, because they all work hand in hand and, and they do their job when they're all uh, complete right now I'm just tapping out the internals again I'm using a wooden spoon you can also use a uh, squeegee um, or, you know or something that doesn't necessarily attract a lot of dirt and and whatnot because you want to be able to make sure that the tubes are um, in good shape they need to have a finish to them that's smooth in order for the o-rings to actually do their job um, you know uh, and that's kind of like one of those things where like if a gun's leaking or whatnot it's not typically because you know the the o-ring or, or the chamber is damaged or whatnot it's usually because you know, there's a parts failing or parts being asked to do something that it can't do, which means like if you put too much pressure uh, into one of these guns, it's going to vent and it's going to vent because it's it's like a fail safe. Um, you know, like like cars have, uh, um, you know, when you uh, when you break a uh, timing uh, timing chain or a timing belt, uh, today's cars have a uh, valve um, 